Yo, what is going on guys? It is Rexon back with another video today. I'm going to be teaching you how to get exotics quickly and easily in Roblox Assassin. I'm going to be providing you 2021 tips, so buckle up and get ready and enjoy the video. And let me just say guys, the support on the channel has been absolutely phenomenal recently. Thank you all so much for subscribing. And guys, if you want to subscribe too, that would really help me a lot. Let's get right into the video. If you do not have any exotics, I got you. I'm going to be providing tips that's going to help you get your first exotic, and if you do have exotics, I'm going to be providing tips on how to grow your exotics. But before we do so, I'm going to ask you to please click the like button down below. It really helps a lot. Oh, okay, you're going to be stubborn about it? Well, here is me staring you down until you click the like button. my menacing look influenced your decision in the way I wanted it to. Alright guys, let's get right into the first tip. So for those who are just starting the game and want to get their first exotic, I recommend just playing the game. A lot of people who just start Assassin play the game for like 5 minutes and then complain about how they don't have anything good in their inventory. This leads to them begging for knives and annoying other players. So just play the game and while you're doing so, you will develop skills, improve upon those skills, get a lot of tokens, and gain a ton of experience. Okay, so let's say you played for a while and have a load of tokens. Now you have two options. Your first option is to buy an exotic from the item shop, and your second option is to buy keys and try to unbox an exotic. You can either safely buy an exotic, or gamble and try to get an exotic for less tokens. I recommend that you should not take this risk. It's a chance of high risk, and I mean really high risk, but also high reward. At this level of play, I completely recommend buying one of the exotics from the shop. Now that you have your first exotic, you can either downgrade the exotic into better value, which is something I wouldn't do, or you can try to grind for another one. Let's say you played a lot and now have two exotics. My only goal is to upgrade these exotics into a tier 2 exotic. So basically, you need to upgrade those multiple exotics into one exotic that's worth 2 value. If you don't know values, I will be linking the official assassin value list in the description below. In order to find a trade in which you could give your multiple tier 1 exotics for a tier 2, you may need to server hop or you can chat with people in the assassin discord server, which I'm also going to link in the description. Anyway, another thing you can do is grind for another tier 1 exotic, then trade for a tier 2 that's worth 3 exotics. Okay, so these are the basics of trading. You just need to get good at downgrading and upgrading quickly. A common mistake that people make is that they are too scared or stubborn to downgrade. I have made this mistake too and I am still doing it right now. For example, I have Competitor Blade 2, one of the best knives in the game. Although I want to gain value, I am too scared to downgrade the knife. I'm too afraid of making a bad trade. Although I am slowly gaining value as the price of the knife is rising, I could be gaining a ton more value if I downgraded it. To summarize, constantly upgrade and downgrade your weapons to gain value. Let's head over to tip number two. Insert cool edit. As I said before, downgrading is key. My second tip for you is always downgrade tier 1 and tier 2 mythics into exotics. When doing big trades for tier 3 or tier 4 exotics, it is hard to find someone who is willing to accept mythics. I recommend that you should downgrade those mythics into tier 1 or tier 2 exotics. This will help a lot when trying to gain value. So there is something I need to discuss that I briefly mentioned before that is important for trying to obtain exotics. Investing. I have talked about this in my previous videos but I'll explain it again. Investing, or making investments, is trading more value than what the knife is worth, hoping that it will rise in the future. This is where overpay values come into play. And I have to say, overpay has become more confusing and complex than it ever has been. This is where I step in. Well, to be honest, this is my video, so I have been stepped in this entire time. Okay, never mind that. Let's just get right to the point. Okay, so a great way to gain exotics is to invest in knives that have high overpay value. When a knife has high overpay value, this usually means it has really high demand. It also means that it's going to rise in the future. I'll give you an example of a trade that I did that got me like 20 exotics value. At the time of this recording, Holiday Blade is at around 45 exotics in base value. Sometime in the past, I can't 
can't exactly remember when, I traded around 25 exotics for it. At the time, it was really low and I noticed that it was a pretty old knife. I thought to myself, I think this knife is going to skyrocket. What do you know? It did. It is now at 45 base and that's not even counting the overpay value. And this happens a lot. This is mainly how I get all of my value from investing. Remember, only invest in knives that have high demand and high overpay values. If you give three exotics for like a phantom or something, that was just dumb. Tier ones are never going to go up in value. There is no reason why you should invest in them. Players tend to get mad about overpay values. Some of the richest players get frustrated with them saying that they are just random values made up by some random dude or how do I know if I can trust that value if you want to get exotics you need to understand how a market works so overpay values aren't necessarily values that are made up they might be to an extent but these are first created when a trade is active so let's say John noticed that Phil had a possessed axe and wanted to trade for it he looked on the value list and saw that Possessed Axe is a tier 3 that is worth 30 exotics. He tried giving 30 exotics worth of value for that knife, and Phil said, No way! The value of this knife is going to rise in the future! John realized he needed to overpay. So as I said before, I'm currently explaining how overpay values are created. So hypothetically, at the time, overpay values for Possessed Axe have not been created. Anyway, John knew that he needed to pay more than what the value was worth. He needed to invest. His first thought was to trade 45 exotics worth for it. He then looked at the demand of the knife and realized that it was only at 3 stars. This is pretty low for a tier 3, so he thought to himself that he needed to come down on the price. He tried to pay 40 exotics for the Possessed Axe and he got the deal. He successfully invested in Possessed Axe. The two ways he can gain value now is if he waits for the knife to rise or another player offers him more for the knife than John paid. Anyway. So Phil, the guy who gave John Possessed Axe for 40 value, comes across Bob, who also has a Possessed Axe. Phil wants to trade for it, so he offers 35 exotics for it. Bob declines, so then Phil decides to give 40 value for it, but this time, he adds obtainables into the mix and he takes out the unobtainables. Bob accepted and now the cycle continues. The message of trading 40 value for Possessed Axe now spreads as people continue to accept that value. Disclaimer, I don't know if Possessed Axe actually gets 40 value, but that's about what I would trade for it. This interaction between John, Phil, and Bob happens all the time with other players. This is generally how overpay values are formed. The reason why people just don't make overpay values up in a second is because whenever they try to spread the idea of their made up value, it would usually get denied by the community. Only reasonable overpay values spread across the community and are widely accepted. What I am trying to say is, try to optimize the usage of overpay pay values rather than blatantly denying them unless they are completely unreasonable. If you are unsure about an overpay value of a knife, just ask the assassin discord server to verify. People may also say that overpay values are stupid because what if the overpay values are overpaid and that overpay values will become another base value? This will probably not happen because of the reasons I explained. To rephrase, People are afraid that overpay values will be overpaid whenever people overpay for overpay and the overpaid value for the overpaid value will become the overpaid value for the overpaid value. And then the overpaid value is overpaid whenever the overpaid value on the overpaid will become the overpaid value whenever it's overpaid on the overpaid. <laughs> Keep in mind that the more trades you do, the more experience you'll be and you'll develop your own trading strategies along the way. All right, so that wraps it up for tip number two. Let's head over to tip number three. <laughs> I'm still so confused why I picked the most obnoxious music possible for that edit. Anyway, so my third tip for you is going to comprise of multiple tips. So the first thing I want to mention is to save up tokens for holiday events. Usually, I like to save up around 100,000 tokens for events such as the Halloween and Christmas updates. There are usually holiday cases in which you can unbox holiday knives. The demand for these knives are always really high and the value is always constantly going up. Another thing is to acquire common hordes. A common hoard is a collection of one type of knife. 300 of the same common knife would be an example of a hoard. People tend to give big exotics for these hoards. I've talked about this in the past, but I just wanted to bring it up again. Other than commons, you should collect the legendaries. Legendaries can be crafted into tier 1 exotics. Remember, doing small trades are important. 
doing trades that gain you a couple rares or even legendaries are super beneficial. So for this final part of the video, I am going to summarize the timeline of being in the process of gaining exotics. So first, play the game and earn yourself your first tier 1 exotics, upgrade your tier 1s into tier 2s, and if you ever unbox a mythic, try to downgrade it into exotics, try to obtain as many tier 2s as possible, then trade them for a tier 3, repeat the process to get another tier 3, keep repeating the process until you have enough for a tier 4, then trade for the tier 4 and then basically repeat everything you just did a couple times. Now, start trying to trade for a top 100 prizes. Once you have a top 100 prize, you should completely understand the strategy for gaining exotics. Congratulations! If you came here because you wanted a mass amount of exotics, downgrade that top 100 prize into a bunch of exotics. Or if you have any like tier 4s or tier 3s, downgrade them into a bunch of exotics. Keep in mind that you can completely skip this entire process by just grinding for top 100 or top 10 in the competitive season. Alright guys, I hope this video helped you in any sort of way. My only intentions when making this video was to help. Please note that the information that I presented may not be 100% accurate, but are the types of strategies and ideas that I keep in mind when growing my inventory. Everything I know about overpay values and trading strategy all comes from my experience of being an assassin player. This is the intel that I have gathered while playing the game and being an assassin veteran. And when I say not 100%, it might be 99% accurate at the least. If there is anything that I missed, make sure to tell me in the comments section below. I might make a follow up video to explain other things that you guys don't understand in the game. I know there are a lot of new players that are struggling and I'm here to help. Anyway guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you did, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss out on any future videos or live streams. And yes, you heard me right. I do live streams and they are super fun, so I definitely recommend stopping by to hang out. If you want to hang out with me in one of my live streams, once again, make sure you do click that notification bell. It is super important. If this video helped in any way, make sure to smash that like button too. Clicking a bunch of buttons on my YouTube page helps me a whole ton and inspires me to make these kinds of videos. Remember, if you have any questions about trading an assassin, please let me know. I'll answer every single one of you. If you leave a cool comment, I will heart it and maybe reply. Alright, it's my time to go now. Have a wonderful rest of your day and until next time, I'll see you guys later.